Resident Evil 4 is a third-person survival horror game that follows Leon Kennedy as he tries to rescue Ashley Graham, the president's daughter, in a desolate part of rural Spain. The game is currently available on PC, PS4 and 5, and Xbox Series consoles. Atmosphere. Thanks to the upgrade in graphics and the effort put into the redesign, the village and forest areas are even more vile than before, and teeming with little details that add so much to the environmental storytelling, giving even the smallest and most insignificant room a purpose. There's so many disgusting and repulsive things laying around the village mixed in with the general decay and abandonment that reflects the circumstances of its citizens. The castle is full of beautifully ornate and dramatic structures as well as medieval torture dungeons and dark dank crypts and tunnels, and the island is a mechanical maze of foreboding military structures and cold clinical test labs. But the atmosphere is difficult to process sometimes. The early game is much slower and allows you to take things in as you explore and travel from one area to the next, but as the game progresses, there's less of this downtime to appreciate the world around you as the combat feels nearly endless. The combat itself is still very intense, and even with more accessible controls, it's stressful enough with the haunting music playing in the background that it can make some encounters feel much more desperate than they really are. The game has its standout spooky moments, with Ashley's section being much more frightening than the original, and the game generally benefits from much better lighting effects to make exploring dark areas more intense, thanks to the constant threat of enemies appearing out of nowhere. Whilst the atmosphere is greatly improved, it still suffers from the same things as the original, but admittedly a lot less. There's far less cracking jokes, and whilst Leon himself is a powerhouse and the controls are much easier to handle, it feels like the combat requires the same amount of attention thanks to there being more mechanics like parrying and weapon durability on knives. The combat still manages to be intense, the music manages to make the combat stressful, and the environments are as bleak and foreboding as the enemies are relentless. That's one Harry Mason. What the fuck? Scares. Much like the original game, the scares are a bit lost in between the constant action and story sections. There's several spooky moments spread throughout, but even with things like the regenerators, the scares are very few and far between. The combat itself has the potential to be frightening with enemies coming up behind you, but it's very rarely that it works out that way. It never felt overwhelming, as I said in the original review, the combat is only really as frightening as you are prepared for it. The enemy redesigns are pretty frightening, with even the first enemy's face being frankly haunting, but the truth is that enemies are really only frightening in appearance the first time you see them, and after that you'll see them all the time and the fear dissolves as you gun them down like everything else. The scares that are in the game mostly consist of random jump scares and unnerving encounters with enemies, with the standout being again, Ashley's sequence in the castle. Though you can't ignore the sound of the regenerators, they're easy to defeat with the right tools. Even this 
this thing is controlled by bugs. Whilst this remake is more frightening, or at least more successful in delivering those scares than the original, sadly the scares don't really balance out for the length of the game. That's still on Harry Mason. Ashley, run! sound design. The game's soundtrack is a real treasure trove of different ideas. It encompasses more traditional sad and slow strings that feel dusty and old to the sound of grinding stone soaked in reverb. The gentle plucked guitar of the save music is somehow older and more somber, but the combat music is dissonant, crashing of so many different things that it almost causes nausea to listen to. There's the thudding drums and random percussion, distorted whines drenched in static. It's breaking down and scraping through your ears like a metal cabinet on a concrete floor. The sound of rust and violence. The boss fights have an epic feel, from the creature in the lake with its orchestral stings, wild repetitive melodies and monstrous collapsing strings. Other bosses have a choir to back them and there's a real sense of urgency and finality to them, like they're all the final boss, but you know that there's more. The sound effects are a treat to listen to with even something as simple as opening your inventory being so immaculately produced that it sounds unrealistically good. And the effort has been put in everywhere else as well, from the sound of guns to opening doors to the eerie sound of Leon's footsteps through a puddle in an empty room, it's all pretty much perfect. Such a pleasure to finally make your acquaintance, Mr. Kennedy. The voice acting is very good, but some parts of me would have preferred the original voice actors to reprise their roles, but what we got was pretty good. Some great performances, especially from Lewis, who is much more present in this version of the game, and of course, the merchant. Welcome. I've got something new for you, mate. The sound, space, and directional audio were pretty damn good with all of the voices, both Leon's and the enemy's various murmurs and shrieks, fitting perfectly well with the environments they were in, both in reverb and directionally. Sound design was really, really good. That's two Harry Masons. The gore is greatly improved thanks to the graphics, with sickening details not only shown through the realistic graphics, but the added animations, like the police officer at the start is shown to be alive and wriggling around as he's set on fire in a pretty disturbing scene, where in the original he was already dead. Whilst the game doesn't specifically add anything new that I noticed, it really goes into a lot more detail. Blood gushes out of everything. When a mutant explodes, it spreads its sickly yellow viscera in an unnecessary blast that's as satisfying as it is gross. Fire mechanics will also leave enemies caught in the radius, a smouldering black ruin, which is also pretty gnarly. The science experiments are truly nasty to behold, and the death animations are just as good as the original, if not better. Ultimately, the gore is more realistic in both the best and the worst ways. That's three Harry Masons. Story. 
story. The story follows Leon Kennedy, protagonist of Resident Evil 2, as he's sent into rural Spain to retrieve the president's daughter after she was kidnapped. He arrives and after the brutal killing of his escorts, is left alone to hunt down Ashley Graham in a town full of seemingly hostile cultists. The story follows the original plot quite closely, but has some pretty major but beneficial changes here and there. The biggest one is tone, with the game presenting itself as a far darker and more serious scenario, with characters realistically acting out how real people would react to the things that transpire. There's also a bigger focus on character interactions and spending time with them so that there's more meaningful connections to the characters you meet, which is never a bad thing. There's also a lot more notes left around that I don't remember from the original that described a lot of what was going on in the castle, which really built up Salazar's character a bit more, as well as some others that you don't really get to meet. The plot development and pacing is a lot better, with previous long gameplay sections cut up with dialogue, cutscenes and notes to remind you of what's going on. The story splits up the gameplay just enough to not get in the way of the combat, but enough to keep the story in your mind. Really, the story was always pretty entertaining with familiar themes of science experiments gone wrong, but Resident Evil 4 added religious themes with a parasitic creature and a deranged cult leader that makes for an excellent backing to the great gameplay, and thanks to the redesigns, it works well with the horror elements too. Making the final score, 4 out of 5 Harry Masons. Resident Evil 4 was a classic and a staple in the horror genre, even if it's mostly known for adding more action into the mix, and the remake pushes it back into horror territory without compromising the experience. This was an immensely fun game to play, and a very impressive game to experience. Again, I'd like to remind you, the whole thing is down to my opinion in horror games, and if you don't share this opinion, then that's cool. I get it. I'd like to point out that whilst I too suffered at the hands of the Plagas, I did not give in to the infection, and I advise you don't either. There will be more horror reviews in the pipeline, and thanks for watching. And always go check out Bumps in the middle of the night. Peace.